What's going on guys? This is Vince with vshred.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to achieve the V taper body appearance. All right, so V taper body appearance. This is pretty much just another way to talk about the, an aesthetic figure, an aesthetically appealing figure, which is typically when you go for the wider appearance up top and taper it in to give you that V shape. So when it comes to trying to achieve that look, you have to understand which specific muscles are going to benefit this the most and also which ones are going to hurt it the most. The two that are the most important is, obviously if you're trying to achieve a V taper look, you need to get the upper body as wide as possible. So that is going to be obviously your shoulders, okay? So when it comes to your shoulders, there are three different heads in your deltoid. You have your, your front delt, you have your interior deltoid, your side delt, your medial, and your rear delt, which is your posterior. When you are trying to get your shoulders wider, obviously you're gonna be hitting your medial deltoid. So that's the first thing that we're gonna be working on. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys three exercises for that. Then after that, I'm going to be working on lats because when you're trying to get that V taper look, the number one thing that's going to get that tapered look on your body is your lats. So you have to have the shoulders wide. From there, you have to have the lats to match it and the lats have to taper in. So you have to go for back width rather than back thickness and that's going to be i'm going to show you three exercises for that and then last but not least this is one that i'm not going to show you any exercises for and this is your obliques a lot of people think that in order to get a v taper appearance you need to work your obliques and build muscle there if you build muscle in your obliques this is going to do nothing but make that part of your body this little slab of meat wider than it needs to be, therefore making the tapered in part wider, making it not so tapered. So I'm gonna show you three exercises to work your medial deltoid, your outer, your side delt. Then I'm gonna show you three exercises to work on back width rather than the thickness of this lat. Um, and then I'm gonna remind you guys one last time not to hit your obliques. So got the three exercises right here. The first one is going to be a very common exercise and this is just going to be a lateral raise. I see lateral raises done wrong pretty much every single time I see lateral, lateral raises done. This is what you see when you see a lateral raise. You see guys going like this every time, every time. This, first off, let's get rid of that bounce in my knees. So now we're here. Second off, let's get rid of me shrugging up my shoulders. So now we're going to press my shoulders down. Big difference between right here and pressing my shoulders down. Now the third thing is, we're not bringing this weight up. We're bringing this weight, so your, your muscle, your medial deltoid is gonna be worked by shortening your muscle. So that means bringing right here up to right here. And that's not by lifting this weight up, it's by pressing the weight outward. Otherwise, when you bring this weight up, you're going, to, you're going to bring your shoulders with it, therefore you're gonna get a little shrugging motion and you're gonna start working your traps. So a lateral raise is going to look like this. So you're gonna press your shoulders down. You're going to take this weight. You're gonna focus on your elbows. Forget about what's in your hand. Take your elbows and you want them to go outward rather than up like that so you don't get any kind of shrugging. Keep your shoulder down the whole time. Press it out. And what you're gonna notice is you're not able to bring this weight past, I mean, parallel is going to be the farthest up that you should be able to bring it if you are in correct position. And then a lot of times, most guys don't, have, don't even have the range of motion to get it there. They're gonna end up going like this, and that's still going to be full range of motion. This is going to be all medial delt rather than getting a little bounce in the knees and then also bringing this up where it's a lot of shrugging. So that's the first one. Second one is going to be an upright row. Now, if you have, I'm just gonna say this because I'll probably get heat for it in the comment section. If you have shoulder issues, do not do this exercise, okay? This is typically when you are looking for, when, when a physical therapist is gonna be looking for a shoulder impingement, they're going to put your elbows in this position and press up and down and see if it hurts. Because this is 
this is how this is you can injure your shoulders if you have bad shoulders by doing this hand if you overload it too much and you don't focus on that mind muscle connection and you're kind of just throwing your throwing the weight around you're gonna end up hurting yourself so it's probably better that you guys are watching this and learning the form right now so um, what you don't want to do also is bring your hands in too close you don't want them right here you want them out a little bit more that way you can focus on driving your elbows up keeping them a little wider that way you can focus on hitting that medial head of your deltoid so and then also you don't want to bring this weight right along your body you want to bring it outward that way you can get your elbows up that way you can bring this part of your arm as close up to this part of your arm shorten and lengthen that muscle right there now this is going to hit um, not this is not going to completely isolate your medial head of your deltoid but it's going to hit it very well so you want just inside a shoulder width apart you're going to take it from here you're going to drive your elbows out and up just like that in front of you and this is going to be an upright row to help widen your shoulders so that's the second one and the third one for your medial head of your deltoid is going to be a standing shoulder press now I'm aware this is a compound movement but with it standing you're going to um, be you're not you're not going to be going as heavy and so it's going to make it a little bit harder it's going to put some emphasis on your core but at the same time when you're standing it's going to help you put more emphasis on where you want it if it's heavy you're just kind of pushing with all your might and you're going to be working a bunch of different muscles that's the whole point of a compound movement but you can also drop weight on exercises like a shoulder press stand up that way you wouldn't be able to go as heavy anyways and then you can really focus on putting more emphasis on one area of the muscle than the others so instead of just getting under here and pressing up as hard as you can what you want to do is get this weight you want to roll your shoulders backwards bring your elbows forward a little bit so instead of having elbows straight out to the side you want your shoulders back elbows forward that right there is going to put emphasis on that medial head of your deltoid and then you're going to go from here you're going to press this weight up you're going to bring it together you want to squeeze right there you don't want to just relax your arms right here you want to squeeze your shoulders as much as possible bringing it outward elbow still forward at an angle bringing it down as if you're bringing it in front of your neck press back up squeezing your shoulder back down and one fluid motion Ooh, so that's going to be the third one and that's gonna be all the, that's gonna be the three exercises that you can do to help get your shoulders to be wider. Now let's move on to the back exercises. All right, so first exercise to help with back width is going to be a given for a lot of people, but I also want you to listen up because I'm gonna show you how to do it right. Is a lat pull down. And what I don't wanna see you guys doing in the gym anymore is this. I made a video about how to do a lat pull down and this right here is a no-no. The issue is, first off, I'm creating momentum by swinging. So I'm just gonna be losing a lot of the contraction that I could be getting. Next up, when I swing this weight, now look at the position that I'm in and I'm pulling this weight down. So now, if I kept it like this and I stood back up, all of a sudden, I bring my shoulders down. If I'm pulling it like this, I'm doing a rowing motion now this is going to be working on thickness this is not if you're leaning back and pulling that in that's a rowing motion that's not working on width the way to get your back to be wider to get your lats to come out wider is by bringing your elbows in towards your side you want them out and you want them in towards your side so when you're doing a lat pull down you want to make sure you want to scoot back on the seat a little bit so that this bar is just in front of your head that way when you bring this down you're going to lead with your shoulders that's another thing is you want to make sure that you're retracting your scapula that means you want to roll your shoulder you want to lead with your shoulders you want to bring them all the way down first and then from there bring your elbows all the way in and i mean all the way in that doesn't mean lead with your shoulders and come bring it to right here and back up there's a big difference between right here in right here so make sure you're getting the full range of motion make sure you're not losing tension at the top right here you're, you're leading with your shoulders bringing your elbows in towards your side almost trying to get them to touch your lat muscle bringing it back up just before you lose tension right back into the next one
that's gonna be the first one. All right, the next one is also going to be on the cable pull down machine, but it's not gonna be a regular lat grip or a lat pull down. It's going to be a neutral grip. So what's gonna happen is, I mean, you're not gonna have, most gyms aren't gonna just, all, all gyms aren't gonna have the same handles. Whatever handle is going to be maybe a foot apart just inside of shoulder width, and your hands are going to be in a neutral position, meaning that you're basically like hammer fisting. That's a neutral position, not supinated, not pronated, right in the middle. So you're gonna take this, so now you might be thinking, well, Vince, you just said that to make your back wider, you need the elbows to come out, and you need them to bring, to be brought in. That's one way. Another way to get your back to be wider is with shoulder extension, which means your elbows coming from up in front of you and down back at an angle like that. That's the other way to get your back wider. So a neutral grip lat pull down like so is another great example. So you're gonna scoot back. Again, you wanna lead with your shoulders and then from there, you're gonna drive your elbows back and really try to tuck them in against your lat. Don't be bringing this weight down and just kind of stopping right here where you're just getting like a lot of bicep work going on. You wanna focus on getting a stretch. This is, I'm a little tall for this, but you wanna focus on getting a stretch, leading with your shoulder, driving down through your elbows and squeezing all the way in, getting that peak contraction, going back into the next one, getting a stretch, not losing tension, and back into the next rep, just like that. Really focus on that shoulder extension. That's the whole point of this movement is your elbow coming from right here down in towards you. Bar should be ending just at your chest. And this is going to be the second exercise for getting your lats to be wider. Now into the third. All right, the third exercise for working on back width is going to be a straight arm push down. This is going to be the same kind of concept as the neutral grip lat pull down. So with the neutral grip lat pull down, you have your arms up and you're bringing your elbows in front of you, getting shoulder extension, squeezing. This movement is, is what really matters. It doesn't matter what your hand, where your elbow's doing. It matters where this is being brought, your upper arm only. So this is going to be the same concept. So when you're doing this, what you wanna focus on is not really what your hands are holding here. You want your arms to be locked in one position the whole time. And then you wanna really focus on flaring your lats at the top, getting a stretch right there. There's a big difference between stretching my lats like that and just kinda of letting it hang. You wanna stretch your lats right there. And then from here, you really wanna focus on your elbows driving down and bringing them all the way back getting that, you can't really see it, but getting a peak contraction on my lat muscle. You wanna get that stretch on your lats right here. You wanna drive your elbows down, squeezing them back right there is your peak contraction. You're gonna go back up just before you lose tension. If you straighten out, you lost tension. You wanna stop just before that, squeezing this back, squeezing your elbows back, upper arms, the only thing that matters, but keeping your elbow locked in one position you don't wanna start straight and then end up going like that. It's not the same. You're gonna lose a lot of leverage on this, on, on your muscle. So keep your elbows locked in one position, flare your lats, drive your elbows downward, squeezing them back, getting a nice squeeze on your lat muscle. Then you come forward just before you lose tension, back into the next one. So, that is going to be the third and final exercise of how to achieve the V taper body appearance. And then last, I'm gonna to touch one more time on, we talked about medial head of your deltoid. You wanna get your shoulders wider. We talked about getting your lats wider to get that V taper appearance. And then last, you do not want to hit your obliques. If you work your obliques, you're going to build muscle there. If you build muscle on your obliques, it's going to make the waist wider and that's it. So don't train your obliques get your back wider, get your shoulders wider, that's going to give you the V taper appearance, and then you can consider yourself aesthetic, I guess. So, if you guys like these tips, make sure you're clicking that thumbs up button below this video. If you guys want more tips like this, I have a free fitness quiz that asks you a couple of questions about your body. It's like a little, it matches you up with um, the free, we have a free training pro part of it that people have been calling it, where it gives you three tips 
And then we have a paid training part of it where I have programs that I've written for each individual body type. And so whatever you answer in the quiz, it matches you up with your program. So you can check it out by clicking the link in the description below this video. Other than that, if you guys like this video, like I said, thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, videos that you guys want me to make, anything you're confused about, leave it in the comment section below this video. And then last but not least, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Got videos coming all the time. So guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.